You were the captain. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> yes. Good evening and a very warm welcome from the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Well, it was quite weird yeah. to play a, a, a World Cup in France, but a quarter final in Cardiff. <laughs> Most important was reaching you know, this, this goal to play against you. But it's a strange situation here in Cardiff for France. They're the World Cup hosts, but unless they can find an inspired performance tonight, they're in grave danger of going out of their own tournament on a foreign field. It was special for me this game because um, in 2006 we played we, we play against you, you know, in, uh, in Lyon. Yeah. And we lost by 40 points. And I was uh, fired of the team, you know, after oh, this. Yeah. Right. So did you not play like, the following week in uh, Paris? No, no, because I was I was out. Oh, all the way out, okay. You know, and it was my my, my third cap, and and basically it was because of me we lost the game. <laughs> wow. Anyway, when we came came to the tournament, we didn't really think about the potential that we could be playing in France in that quarterfinal. Um, when we did, we were like, oh, this might be quite handy that we're not playing. It started to France, you know, in front of the, uh, your home crowd. But uh, to be honest, the noise in the crowd was, uh, Alain Le Bleu was uh, <laughs> drowned out any Kiwis, I tell you. And I, I, what I remember, you know, it was when we, you know, we met for the, for the hacker, you know, the, the flashes in the, in the crowd, you know, it was like, wow. It was going to be something really special because I think, I think it's uh, one of the best team I ever played, you know. The French lining up right on the halfway line to take up the challenge of the Hacker. That atmosphere, eh? Like the no, was great. It. You see, you see the flashes now in the the crowd. Yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. that was like oh. I remember I was in front of uh, uh, Luke McAllister. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. I, rem I can remember, I, I used to talk about, about that with him. Uh, his eyes, you know, like, <laughs> I want, I want to, to, to eat your, your lungs, you know, like, <laughs> right. even before it all began. Seeing you guys uh, line up with the, the third year in red, third, white yeah. and blue, right in our face. It was a way for us you know, to, to show you that it was going to, you were going to, to have a great, a great game together to uh, this day. Wearing the grey jersey, it was sort of like not the usual uh, yeah. all black thing to wear. So. About the grey jersey, uh, you know, the, the um, the, the chief of the delegation went you now during the, the the week and told us, okay, we have to be respectful with with the uh, with the A B, so we, we are going to let them to play now in black. I said, no way, <laughs> <laughs> no way. No. No, we're going to play in blue, and they're going to play whatever they want yeah. to do. <laughs> McCaw in at the fly half position, Carter in the centre, oh, and releases McAllister, and McAllister again. Collins, beautifully done, and does he get over? Yes, McAllister, I think, got in. Well, McAllister had given France one warning just a couple of minutes before. His angle was terrific. He came in on a short ball on the angle, and he picked up Jerry Collins and also supported him. What a great piece of play by the centre. There's Collins as well, and McAllister shouting for it. 
and that's a fine try. On the line is definitely a try. Well played, New Zealand, in particular McAllister. I thought we started reasonably well. We we uh, we sort of got into the game and it actually relaxed us a wee bit. Um, and we scored a try and sort of. But yeah, yeah, we, you scored a try and it was really quick. In fact, yeah, I yeah. say. Mm. It's going to be a long night, oh, I, and I remember what Fabian Pelous, you know, one of the most experienced guys, you know, in the teams, told us the night before. He said, "Okay, we don't care about what's going to happen the first five minutes. They have ten points before. It's, not, it's okay. Don't worry. We're going to come back. You know, it, it gave us, you know, this this confidence that we were able to do this, yeah. whatever you know, the scenario were. I thought about this. Okay." Relax. <laughs> don't, panic. Like, don't panic. Don't panic. Go- that, that, that started well. We're going to see what happens next. Another really good take from Ali Williams. And uh, he hadn't uh, got back on side, so it's... Uh, Advantage to New Zealand, they're really running a ball. They'll go back for the penalty, and back they go. Dusatois was the man. You hit him that hard that he ended uh, up with a, 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 a bruise on his leg, and he ended up not finishing the game, and I reckon that was a quite a significant moment in the game in the first half where one of our guys that used to do that to others um, got it done to him. I didn't even think about that, you say, okay, He's out. Okay, he's one of the mo- mo- most powerful guys of the team, so he have to go, you know, really, really hard. You know, in the big games, it comes down to some individual little moments that exactly. on their own may not be that significant, but you put in the context of uh, they can have quite an impact. We went into half-time, the scoreboard was a little bit closer, you had a bit of momentum, like you'd defended a lot, and then all of a sudden, you went far behind the scoreboard, and we were like... Yeah, and at halftime, um, one of the guys that was in the team in 99 that lost, uh, it was Byron Callagher, he made the comment, he goes, we can't let what happened in 99 happen again. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Where's that come from, you know? But yeah. there's something in his mind that uh, triggered that perhaps it was a similar feeling to what had happened, because it was, some, you know, some of the All Blacks were up in 99 and then it got away on them. And, yeah. It's good to see what you're saying because people think that when you start a game, it's like you 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 start over again. No, you have you know the the weight of the the past. So, but I remember really well this moment because Soriano came on my ribs. Yeah, he kid me. <laughs> and I, so I went on the on the on the, the the changing room. I was like this, and I remember Bernard Apo saying, "No, you you you're okay. It's okay for you. You you it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt." It was like, oh, yeah, it doesn't hurt, but a little bit." <laughs> <laughs> it was that okay. You have to, you, you you have to come back and to be to 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 be to be harder than him. But they start again. They've still got control of the ball. This is Sireski. The hooker sets it up. Good ball this time. Elisal, Josian. This is clear. And in goes Dusitwa. Dusitwa. Defense. How many how many uh, tries did you do you now in your career? In how show? many? Yeah, uh, twenty-seven or eight or something. Yeah, yeah. How many did you get? Not even ten. Oh. So I think <laughs> that's <laughs> quite an important one. You got one no. there, and then the next. Once uh, uh, Clément Poitrono, with the the fullback of the team, told me, "Okay, <laughs> I will get, I will give you ten or twenty tries of mine, you know, for for this try." I said, okay. <laughs> I've been captain full time for a year leading up, and, and to be fair, it'd been reasonably straightforward. We'd played some good rugby, and uh, the team been winning. And once you get to the World Cup, and on that day, it was sort of like, oh, was it just business as usual? And uh, just after I scored that try, I remember starting to go, man, this isn't panning out the way, and I'd perhaps anticipated. I just thought we were going to go and you know perform well, and even if it gets a bit wobbly, you know, we'll just keep working at what we're doing. And as that second half went on, I started to go, and, and then I think everyone started to feel the pressure building, yeah. and, and then all of a sudden I was like, I don't know what you do here, 
but everyone was looking at me going, what do we do as well? And that was, a, that was the feeling that I always reflected on afterwards is not so much uh, that we got beaten, it was actually the fact that we're standing out there when it was done to not go our way, uh, not knowing what to do. When you have nothing to lose, it's, it's quite easy, in fact. <laughs> no pressure. Most of the people doesn't understand the, the mental part of the game, you know? They, mm. they think that if you well prepared, if you're fit enough and you have a good game plan, you're going to It'll win. Go your you know? way, yeah. But they don't understand that it's like, it's about a confidence. Yeah. Because yeah, And often people say, well, why didn't you do that? You know, you go, I was trying, <laughs> but you know, when you can't get any front football or whatever, you just can't. But you would have found, as you, uh, look, maybe in that period, when you started to get some momentum, it actually becomes a bit easier, you know? Yeah, because you're feeling you know, the energy is okay, yeah. and, and you're see, you can see in the eyes of the opponent, yeah. like, okay, he's starting to ask himself some questions, you yeah. know? So you're, st you're starting to feel that there's something happening. Two's in. Yes, it's either the charge down or the intercept or a glorious individual run, isn't it? But I'm worried about this French scrum. That looks better. Not ideal, but better. Oh, and in comes Damien Trey, using his pace. Well, it might have been a touch forward, but he got away with it. Michelin, then pass inside, and Josio over. Well, immediately, the pace and the penetration of Michelin. Well, this one was uh, unexpected, in fact. And you, you told me that's... I know in New Zealand it says, that's no con, no con, no con. <laughs> oh, full pass, yeah, yeah. Wasn't, maybe, uh, uh, honestly, I was, I was you know, in the, near, the, near the action, I, I didn't see that. But, but uh, it, in fact, it was unexpected, you know. It was like, OK, we scored, OK, great. And, and uh, when we scored, I was... I was surprised, you know, because we, uh, as we said, we didn't have the ball, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we, scored, we scored again. Okay. Well, okay. That, that, that's the moments in, in games, you know, like you haven't had the ball, but you get one chance, and yeah. bang, that can be the difference. And I don't remember who said that. OK, now they're going to be really pissed, so we have to be ready for, you know, <laughs> well, for the kickoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but we started to think about what I can do individually, and I felt like in that last... 15 minutes or however long it was, we tried to, you know, make the miracle play rather than sticking to our, you know, really um, building pressure again and, you know, the momentum thing. We had a couple of opportunities when we were inside your 22 potentially to have taken a drop goal. But we'd never practiced it, never talked about it, we'd never won games because of it, so I thought, if I say that, does that mean I'm panicking? <laughs> to make a drop, you have you, you need to have the opportunity to, to do that, you know? Mm. But mm. people don't see that. We put a lot of pressure and on the rugs. Absolutely. We, you, you had a line, you know, ready every time, you know, to, to put the pressure on the number 10. They don't understand that. Yeah, because well, that's what it felt like, is we just couldn't get any momentum. So, like, the, the breakdowns are all slow because of the way you defended and attacked the breakdown. And so we were always flat-footed. And you have a lot of, it just felt like running into brick walls. New France have it. For a moment, it seemed as if France had it. The All Blacks got it back. McAllister through the middle again. Backwards. Lays it back. That was a penalty, probably, I think, against uh, Aaron Ordeke. Not given. Oh, and they've lost it forward. And this is going to be it. Alessandra is just going to run the ball off the bench into the stand. And France are still in the world. We never um, imagined you know, the impact for you, in fact. 
I started to understand this, you know, uh, uh, understanding this, you know, um, a few years, you know, after that. For, for us, it was an important game. Yeah, but, yeah, but you don't think about what the opposition has to deal with. No, yeah. it was like, uh, of course, you, 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 were, you were disappointed because you, 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 were, you were thinking that you were, were going to win this game. But I, I, I never, I couldn't imagine the impact you know, for you and for your country because of, the, of this game, in fact. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, but straight away afterwards, I was, I was sort of like, we're going home on Monday. You know, that was my first thought, which is, yeah, crazy, that's the first thing you, you think about. But it was like, and, and then the next thought was, all my family are going to what, going to Paris uh, next week. What am I going to do? You know, it was funny how those weird things come into your mind. But it was, um, I think for me, it was just disbelief. It was like, how, how could we, you know? Um, I didn't know that, but we both stopped the, the, the competition this day, in fact. Both seem because we had we put so much energy in that we were so happy of that that for the semi final we we lost you know and that's what's unique about World Cups is winning a quarter final uh, or a semi final no matter how well you play means nothing exactly you know, yeah. no one remembers that if you don't get the job done necessarily eh? and I remember uh, at the end of the game I went you 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 accepted to to swap the the, the jersey I remember yeah. that. I, I said to to one of the older guys, like, uh, you think that they would they would be happy to 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 swap my my jersey, uh, his jersey with me, and he said, okay, the, the, the old bags never never swap their the jersey, so <laughs> good luck for you, <laughs> and good luck for the, today. Uh, they they would not they would not accept it, and I remember you were really kind, all of you, you know. I remember that the guys, you know, welcomed me in your changing room, and you. You were nice enough to maybe you did you wanted to just to I want to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. The grey jersey, yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> but for, for for me I said, okay, this this guy is quite class, you know, at this moment to accept, you know, to to to, to stop. Just with Graham Henry was really uh, good as a head coach. Like he got up, you know, not long after the loss, and you imagine what the disappointment was like. We will be scarred for the rest of our lives, and I mean that. Part of our dignity and part of our composure and part of our ability to live on the world stage and be respected is to make sure that we don't bitch and moan. I don't think this country would be respected for it. He goes, we're going to uh, um, make sure we handle this with dignity and, you know, just acknowledge what the French had done. And um, I'm pleased to hear that there was that feeling from your point of view because uh, it was certainly something that we didn't want to be look like sore losers. <laughs> I remember looking at the World Cup as you walked out going, wow, this is, this is real now. Well, the challenge has been received. But everybody was saying, OK, they don't deserve to be there. Well, come at the hour. Well, come at the man. I kind of had a bit of a moment where I was like, this is happening again. Oh, I've got a nice kick it out. Oh! Do they know it? Do they know it? Though? Finally, we're here. We're going to play a final against New Zealand. It's incredible, no? Was still doing it? <laughs> Do you wish you still doing it? <laughs> this is it. House, as you'd expect, 60,000 crammed into Eden Park for this massive occasion. I see this. This is kind of the times you wish you could still put the boots on, I guess. Oh, that you were you were injured. Huh? You were injured. Oh, yeah. You, you, it wasn't it wasn't much fun uh, from that side of things. I remember this moment you know, when I, I look in the crowd. You no, know, I seeing you know all this crowd not in black. In fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, <laughs> we are New Zealand now. <laughs> As Terry Dusatois brings out France, they've never won a World Cup, and the crowd now starting to sense that the players are not too far away. Oh, they can't wait. This is a nervous excitement. A World Cup final doesn't come around very often. So, out they 
come onto this wonderful arena of Eden Park in Auckland. I remember looking at the World Cup as you walked out, going, oh, right, got an opportunity. You know, obviously, the first final would have been in. Uh, I was like, oh, this is, this is real now. <laughs> And I remember looking through your team list of the, the guys that were playing, and I looked through, especially the Ford pack, and that you were all extremely good test players, you were extremely experienced, um, you know, you knew how to play the big games. Uh, I was like, these guys are going to turn up. <laughs> we can see you now the mental part of the game here, because if you compare the, the final to the pool game, it's complete, the, the same teams, but completely different. It's true we had good players, but we, we didn't manage to, to play as a team because, because of internal problems. So I remember that everybody was saying, OK, they don't deserve to be there, even in New Zealand, no? It's like, no, I don't remember because we, we cut no, no, some papers <laughs> and putting imagine. everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> so, OK, OK, they're really thinking this about us, OK? OK, don't worry. OK, OK, OK. And we feed ourselves with, you know, all these opinions. And uh, and at this moment, I really understood that you had the pressure on the <laughs> other show. I knew that. <laughs> wow. Finally, we're here. We're going to play a final against New Zealand. It's incredible, no? And now the All Blacks just waiting for the French to peel off the tracksuits stand in front of them and receive the challenge of the haka. The idea was, uh, what are they going to, which haka are they going to do, you know? <laughs> I was yeah. pretty sure that you were going to do a uh, uh, couple of pongos, so I was like, in my head, I was the, 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 the rhythm of the, of the haka, you know? And I knew when I wanted to, to so go forward, forward to start. Yeah. And I remember the guys, you know, who were so excited, they come on, eat, we have to go for it. Come on, start, start, start. I said, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> And when we, 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 we go, go forward, and I remember as in, in, in Cardiff, no, the crowd, like, people came crazy. Oh, <laughs> it, was yeah. like, it was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I remember all of you, like, uh, you know, it was quite intense, in fact, this moment. Well, the challenge has been received. Well, you can always expect something different from the French when they face the All Black Hucker at a Rugby World Cup 2007 in Cardiff. They had T-shirts on in different colours. Tonight, they put their captain, Terry Dussetoire, at the front, formed an arrow shape and then wound it out across the field as they came forward, accepting the challenge. Facing a Hucker is something special every time. Uh, but it's true that the Kapaung Pongo has a different meaning for us. Sometimes it, uh, actually when the guys got too excited, is it, it could affect how you start the game, you know, when you're a wee bit overhyped, you know. You, so we often had to try and calm, yeah. calm the guys down. <laughs> so first real opportunity for the All Blacks, deep in the red zone, going to a full line-out option. Corey James moves across and behind Nonu. And the throw is good. Pops it off to Tony Woodcock. There's the first try of the final. What a move. Tony 
England got absolutely loved scoring tries as eight in his 83rd test match set piece play. This was a good trick. <laughs> we got us. Well, uh, oh, in, my, in my house, I okay, well done, well <laughs> done, because it was really good you know, to to spare to spare the the blocks and to, to yeah. Because to the... yeah, often teams and their you know ten meters out don't necessarily compete. Yeah. But we'd watched you guys and we knew that you were you know back yourself no matter where to get. So when I went to left and I saw that, you know your guys go up as well, I was like, oh shit, we're, we're on here. And but the thing is, we are we had two guys really competitive in that in line out. And I, when, I, when I see, we come here and say, no way. <laughs> and you can't so do anything about well it. Done. I really thought that. I say, okay, it's a mistake from us. You know, it's, it's a good, you really well prepared the game. You know, yeah. Well well, it wasn't like you were missed the tackle or whatever. No, it was yeah, just yeah. actually, uh, yeah. But that, that kind of settled us down a little bit. And uh, I, I was like, yeah, we've been able to execute the things we want. And I thought it was a good start. But I remember too that I was thinking the same as I thought, you know, in 2007, saying, okay, if we start like this, it's going to be a long night, you know. So, Savart so throws, throws it straight to the All Blacks. And off goes Creedon on a searching run. Taken down on the tackle by Tranduk. Ball laid back there for Wepu. Now here's Thorne running hard at Mass. Now the All Blacks have a player down, and it's Aaron Cruden. No good. No good. Well, that's sad for Aaron Cruden. Both number 10s have been pushed out of the game. And, well, cometh the hour. Well, cometh the man. Number four, 5 8 for the All Blacks. One thing I remember about when Stephen Donald came on, because, you know, he like won another first five and injured, and, but the way he came on with confidence, and it was just like, tell me what we need to do. And he started just directing like he'd been there, you know, as a number 10, you want him to do. And I was like, and when he took the, that shot at goal, um, we'd had Pretty Whippu as our kicker and he'd yeah. missed three. And I didn't realise we'd change kicker. And he just came over and said, I'll have a shot. I was like, oh, OK. Hey, he's in the <laughs> and, game. And when he kicked it, I was watching. And see how it just snuck inside the upright. He'd already turned around and ran back. I was like, did that go over? <laughs> but uh, you can just see his body language. Like, it was really quite calming having a guy come on and just actually want to own own his spot. So it was, oh, well, you don't need to worry about him being intimidated and, you know, on edge. And, yeah, it was... Uh, he, I think he was at the point he had nothing to lose. He'd, exactly, he'd, yeah. he'd come out into a, heard, a cauldron, get into play, and he could only but be a hero, you know? I heard that uh, a few weeks before he was fishing with friends and yeah. they, they called him, so imagine that how it is, you know, to be playing, well, to play a final World Cup in Eden Park. Yeah, he's great mates with um, Richard Kahui, who was in the team, and when he missed out on the initial squad, um, uh, Kahui always said, mate, I, I got this feeling you'll be, you'll, you'll play really? the final. He just laughed and, you know, it was a bit of a banter. And then when he came in, he was like, I told you. <laughs> We knew who he was and we knew that he was a good player, but it was, OK, it's one more, one more of them. But the point is, we, we, I, you, you were involved in that with the, uh, with the Mark Morgan power. Yeah, you know, I, and I didn't know that until after You suspected in France you have did, to, to have done this, uh, you know? I know. Yeah. I got so asked, I got asked. Yeah, some friends you're going to ask you today. They said, you're a dirty player. And yeah, I said, yeah. why? And they said, you were the reason uh, Morgan Power got injured. have a player down after the Nonu charge and now here's Reed almost to the halfway line and that player is offside surely. So it's Para I think who's down. It was McCaw who was arriving on the clean out. My knee obviously uh, clipped him um, but I didn't know that it happened until someone pointed that out later. I, I saw it after and people told me okay you, you, the guys, you, you saw what he did? I said what because I was really close but I didn't know. So no the game but you, this has made, I think, a huge difference because he was one of the leaders, strategic leader of the team, and he, he had a lot of confidence, you know, yeah. at this moment. And it's well, a bit like what you did to Jerry in 07. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, got, I got one back. Uh, he's going to play this way. <laughs> Takes on the tackle of Rougeri, and right on halfway ball there for Nonu. A real opportunity here for the French, Yashvili. 
Now Rougeri. Away it goes to Trent at Rougeri. Doucetois! Doucetois, the captain! France are back. Well, they're back all right. I remember what I said to the guys in halftime. And I told them, okay, they're leading the game by eight points. But the point is that they, they don't like that, you know. They're, they're, they're uncomfortable with, with this, with this difference, you know. That's the point where I was like, I kind of had a bit of a moment where I was like, this is happening again. It's all starting yeah. to unravel was... again. And I was, and, and then I, it was sort of like, this is, this is kind of what I prepared for after what happened in 07, is how are we going to handle when it's all starting to go like this? It was actually Andrew Hoare who had just come off the bench. He looked at me and used a few choice words, but it was, uh, hey, just, what are you doing? We're closer than eight points now back. Yeah. The pressure is getting, coming bigger on the, the shoulder. Away for Trandu Nemos. Wide. Chance for Palisson. He's got electrifying pace, but McCaw nails him in a good tackle, but they didn't go into touch. Now the All Blacks have the ball up off the ground here and are showing them the touchline. And a terrific tackle from McCaw, wasn't it? It wasn't about, you know, trying to do magic things or whatever. It was just about, you know, you've got to play what's in front of you. It was a bit like maybe in 07, what you guys, we just end up having to defend, you know, just discipline. Or when an opportunity pops up to get your hands back on the ball or whatever, then we, uh, we take that. So this is what I've been thinking about for four years is to ask myself, when it gets to this point where the pressure is as much as you could ever get and you've got 10, 15 minutes ahead, are you going to be able to uh, keep the team together? If you, if you want to, we can, we can, we can swap. I give you a two, <laughs> a 2007, you give me 2011. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this moment, we're feeling like it's over. It's like uh, um, <laughs> there's nothing else to, to say because you you a lot of frustration. I would I would say we are sad, sadness. Yeah. And uh, the, the the I think the worst part of the other thing I know is that there's a fair play on that, uh, but you have to to stay and to to see you know the opening, you know, enjoying the moment. It's like. Yeah. The more, the more he's enjoying the moment, the 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 the, the, the sadder you are. Like, okay, I'm missing that. So it's, uh, but it's like this. It was, it, it was great to be part of this. Uh, you got rid of the match too, didn't you? Yeah, but that's a moment for it, honestly. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the for for um, for the award. But it was a collective uh, adventure that finished in this way. I think one of the things I felt was. Just sheer relief. Uh, like when we, you know, obviously just willing the the game to end, you know, and uh, when it finally did, it was sort of like I meant to be happy. <laughs> and I was just, it was just sheer relief of, uh, you know, I think all the the bits that went around having the World Cup at home, the history of you know being unsuccessful, uh, the tightness of the game, you know, all that. It was just like. Thank goodness it's over. At this moment, I felt a lot of frustration, but I really started to be sad you now a few months after. I said, okay, uh, I could have been champion, I uh, guess. After 2007, I spent a lot of time thinking I'd love to have played that game again. Jerry Dussotois, Richie McCaw, they've been here before. It made me remember you know, Jonah Lobo you know, in, uh, against England. And it goes to 
You know, I remember thinking to myself, I'm not going to let this opportunity slip. Winning against them is like writing his name in history. You know? Two of the greats of the game opposing each other as Catlin tonight. After 2007, I uh, spent a lot of time thinking I'd love to have played that game again. <laughs> Well, Toyok has resurfaced right on cue about some disharmony in the French ranks. The thing about the French is that they always seem to have one big game in them at the Rugby World Cup. 2015, we got to play France and Cardiff in a quarter-final of the World Cup. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm not going to let this opportunity slip. <laughs> it's win or go home. And now two great warriors of the game, Richie McCaw and Thierry Dussautois will lead their teams into a sporting battle that will have two nations on the edge of their seats. One week before, we played in the pool against um, Ireland, and we lost the game, you know? Yeah. And after the game, I or no, the staff, the players were saying, oh, we're going to, to be, to go again to play, in the, uh, uh, to play in the Old Blacks, you're going to play in the Old Blacks. And the guys were, were obsessed, you know, many of them about what we could do, you know, before the game, instead of thinking about what we're going to do during the game to win. So all this week, all the week before, okay, we should plan something to do against the, the Aka, the Aka. And I was, no, no. Well, France always faced the All Black Hucker in their own way. And remember what happened the last time they met in the World Cup final. The French advanced. Will they do it tonight? the match hold in store. So much history between these sides. You know when the first sort of might be the first tackle someone makes or the first bit of contact, you gotta you get a sense of oh we're either on today or yeah. you're not sure and oh, it must have been the first you know little tiny little passage of play it felt like we were on a different level to where yeah. we've been and I was like we've turned up today you know and it still didn't guarantee anything but I was like oh, the guys are on. 30 metres out from the line, Carter, promising start for the All Blacks, Nonu, little show of the ball and brushing off two, three tackles, Nonu, just couldn't hook up with anyone, what a start this could be for the All Blacks, McCaw now, the captain takes over the running, now Reed, Conrad Smith, a show of the ball and the offload off, brilliantly taken by Nonu, Milner scuttled a step,
It was like you were training for you this day. Well, it was funny. <laughs> I remember that try. I remember sort of the ball went out. I was like, there's no one in front of him. He's going to score. And I was like, yeah, maybe, uh, I'm, I, yeah, sort of like, oh, surprised that that happened. We actually had a good, you know, we'd, I don't know what the score was. Maybe we got up by two or three tries. But then off a of scrum, I missed a tackle on, uh, it was pick -mole. And he went right down. I think you guys end up scoring a try from it. And I was yeah. like, all that good work. I've been the culprit for letting it uh, unwind. I think that's what happened. But they've had to wait over half an hour. Oh, this feels too late, doesn't it? And the shove goes on from the All Blacks too. Pickamoles though breaks away. Great run from the number eight. Milner Scudder though makes the tackle. Now Tales, they've got numbers away to the right. Dumoulin moves it on, spitting. Short pass away to Fofana. Good tackle made by Conrad Smith, but France race onto the attack now. Reed was fighting for it, but the French have it and they have an overlap. Gerardo McCall came across and made the tackle. Very solid contact. Loose ball in centre field. Scooped up by Pickham. And that's when I was like, oh, the momentum, you know, we've had all the momentum till now, and it's, it's this is where it could turn. I, I didn't even remember this try. It's like, I read, I read it, like, <laughs> you remember um, the Savea did a, a good try, you know? And I remember, you know, I think that he, he, he went on uh, one or two players. I was. It was like it, it made me remember, you know, Jonah Longo, you know, in uh, yeah. against in, uh, against England. England. Yes. And Carter calmly back, puts it stay. high. Ben Smith okay, with the chase, up. and he's got it. Yeah, ben Smith. Spinning's gone down in a heap. Brilliant take, and now the French are in all sorts of trouble. Still had work to do, but my goodness me, he made it look easy. Bumping off two world-class defenders. Spedding is no slouch in defence. Saber just showing what class of power he has. He does rather remind you of someone else when he's in that sort of form, doesn't he? It's pretty hard to defend against, isn't it? Like, Honestly, I knew that we were going to lose, but... And, I didn't know that we were going to lose by 60 points. It's like in a World Cup, losing by 60 points when you're wearing the French jersey. No, no, no. Until now, I didn't accept it. It's like when yeah. I see him now, my, my ex teammates, it's always something like, okay, this day we did something bad. Because it was your last game. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was my last <laughs> game. I knew it. Uh, and uh, it's the tough well, thing about a World Cup is it could be any one of a few days, eh? But you know that yeah. when you lose, it's yeah. But how did you experience you know, the, this World Cup? You know, if you compare with 2011, I imagine that you had less pressure and you enjoyed more. It was it was a different sort of pressure. Like it was pressure we put on ourselves rather than the need to win. Like we, I wanted to play that game again in 07. We got a chance to do that, and that kind of ticked that box. But no team had been able to turn up back to back and there was a few of us that had been around um, for quite a while that were going to finish. It was it was like an opportunity rather than, a, than something that you just can't yeah, afford exactly, not to get yeah. right. It was like we've got an opportunity to do something different. So it's and, more positive. And kind of put, yeah, positive pressure and, uh, and the biggest moments when it really gets tough are you the ones that actually lead the way and you see other teams not handle it and I guess that that meant that you know the bigger the moment the better. Drops it up to Nakai Tati. Coles is there, makes the tackle, rips the ball away. Carter, Sabia, Julian Sabia's in for a hat trick. Makes ground, nice ball into space. Charlie Balmolina, oh, this is wonderful stuff from the All Blacks. And Kieran Reid is in for the try. Oh, here's Monu up a beautiful offload from Sunny Bell. Williams and Kerber. World Cup. Six 
62 to 13. Well, France have been well and truly sent packing from the 2015 Rugby World Cup. It hurts. Again, it's not because it was my last international game. It's just because I was ashamed, you know, to to do that kind of performance, you know, with uh, with the blue jersey, you know. Um, in fact, the red jersey. <laughs> it's like us with the grey jersey. As you were like, uh, the, the one day, as soon as someone asked me, you know, for this this jersey, I take it. I don't <laughs> want to see it anymore, you know, like. But until now, you know, it was it was eight, um, yes eight um, years ago. Years ago, and yeah, I'm still I'm still angry you now about what we did this performance. I think that you can see, you can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to have to put you through that. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's life is like this. It's yeah. like if you, I think that if you're happy to see good moments, you have to assume that the the, the worst one. But in some ways, and that the the moments like that actually make the good moments. Uh, mean more too because you know what it takes and if you don't quite get it right, you know, that can happen. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Neri he just led all the way through the tournament, did his country proud. Well, a sad exit though for a man who was a great player, captain of France. Having the chance to play, you know, against a, a great team makes you better, even if I, I didn't win enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite happy about, about this experience because uh, 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 I was lucky enough to, to be part of these great moments, to play three World Cups, to play a final World Cup, even if we, we, fin we didn't win it. I think that we, we, are, we are quite blessed no? to, to, to have experienced that. Absolutely. I think that it's very similar from a New Zealand point of view. Like, uh, the history in the, uh, between the two nations, and, and I got to see it growing up, you know, the 87 World Cup, when the French came to New Zealand in 94 and won the two test series in New Zealand, and then obviously what happened in 99 as a spectator, you put all that those moments as a youngster growing up, you go, I wonder what it's like to be playing in those games. You know, the respect uh, between, the, I think, the teams, but also individuals, you know, you. Especially after over seven, I was I was just like, how did you have so much influence on a on a game? You know, when I wanted to do that, and then same thing after 2011, I was like, mate, you've done it again. You nearly uh, <laughs> got us again. And uh, but I think that's what's cool now is that you have a friendship, as you sort of know uh, the, the the experience that you've gone through. There's a fair bit of stuff that you don't even need to say that you just know what each other has has experienced out in the field, which is a pretty cool thing to have. From a French point of view, uh, we had so much respect for 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 for, for the All Black. Then uh, winning against them is like writing his name in uh, in history, no? I think the longer you're out of the game, the more you you enjoy. Looking back, what I find intriguing is often we look at it just from our own point of view. You forget that there's 15 guys on the other side that have a perspective that are part of that, that moment. And I think that's what I've found really, really interesting and cool is to uh, hear, hear the other side.